they have uh, over 40 antipsychotic medications, but they all work the same. They are blockers of the dopamine 2 receptors in the postsynaptic uh, uh, terminal, and they, they are no different from each other. You're watching the Spotlight Network. Starring Hollywood's newsman, and Logan Crawford. They now believe a single member. He works with TV and film legends. And now, Logan's shining the spotlight on the world's top emerging authors and creators. International, we're abducted. This is Spotlight with Logan Crawford. Streaming on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on the Spotlight Network, we're diving into a powerful and important book. It is called Serotonin Nation, A Driver of the Status Quo. It is written by a terrific author. His name is Adonis Vera, MD. For over 60 years, psychiatric treatment has been guided by the serotonin and dopamine hypotheses. Yet depression and psychosis continue to rise around the globe. In his groundbreaking book, the author challenges conventional treatments and explores new models and offers innovative therapeutic strategies that could redefine mental health care for future generations. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight, and we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Doctor, good to see you today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to have you on the show. SSRIs have been the go-to for decades now when it comes to psychiatric treatment, anxiety, depression, and so on. Uh, but they don't seem to be working quite as well as we hoped, correct? Correct. Uh, in the, like, for example, if we look if you go back a hundred years ago, uh, we had large public institutions for for uh, mental health, uh, leprosy, tuberculosis. So what we have now, we we only have state hospitals left, or these large institutions for mental health, and that's because in mental health we did not make that much progress as it was made in 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 other disciplines that eventually got us rid of tuberculosis and 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 leprosy so so uh, we have medications we have serotonin um, reuptake inhibitors so-called ssris we have antipsychotic medications which basically block dopamine but but the prevalence of mental illness continues to increase in 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 the world and uh, actually, when I started to read this book, uh, to, to write this book in um, uh, uh, last year, uh, there were 30 years from from the the book written by Elizabeth Wurzel, uh, um, Prozac Nation. And uh, so I, I was about to look and see what happened in these 30 years. Uh, did we improve? That was the year when when also uh, some new uh, medications came such as uh, uh, Zoloft and Prozac a little bit before that and and all that but but we we haven't improved much uh, in fact the prevalence of major depressive disorder has increased uh, since since the 80s and which means that we are making some changes in this condition you know these treatments have been used for decades now a 30 years since the book Prozac Nation has been put forth, and there's been really little progress. But there are alternatives, in your opinion, including AHR. Talk to us a little bit about AHR. Yeah, AHR is, 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 a, is a receptor that we haven't paid much attention in mental health. It's called aryl hydrocarbon receptor. Is the, um, uh, the receptor that, that gained our attention uh, back in the 70s, when people were studying um, Agent Orange, uh, which which was used in, in in Vietnam, and many Vietnam veterans have have uh, uh, conditions uh, that that are associated with uh, faulty um, aryl hydrocarbon receptor. So it's a receptor that responds to internal uh, chemicals that are in the body 
and also to external uh, uh, toxins and, uh, and, and stimuli that are outside the body. So AHR is found in the biological barriers, mainly the gut barrier, the blood-brain barrier, placental barrier, and so, and so forth. So uh, uh, what people have found is that that overstimulation of the aryl hydrocarbon receptor uh, can result in translocation of microbes from the gut, where we have a microbiome, into the uh, in, into the systemic circulation, and eventually these microbes or their molecules reach the brain. For example, um, in people with Alzheimer's disease and some people with schizophrenia. Uh, LPS or lipopolysaccharide, which is a component of the gram-negative bacteria from the gut, was found in the brain. So um, uh, when LPS gets into the brain, it triggers inflammation or neuroinflammation, inflammation of the, the, the brain tissue. And, uh, and, and that was something that was <clears throat> found in, in mental illness that plays a major role in, in mental illness that we didn't pay much attention before. Mm. So, so the good thing about aryl hydrocarbon receptor is that it can be influenced by, by um, a diet, um, lifestyle medicine, um, a, a various, um, com a, a various uh, 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 components of, of food, such as, such as uh, uh, polyphenols, uh, curcumin, they 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 uh, deactivate this receptor, and uh, that can that can be something that that we should look at and and research more in mental illness. For Absolutely. example, uh, berberine mm -hmm. it's it's one of the uh, comp uh, one of the nutrients that can can deactivate aryl hydrocarbon receptor. Yes. obviously resistant to all of this is the pharmaceutical companies because they're making billions and billions of dollars with the status quo. Uh, whereas the AHR receptors can be addressed through diet, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a lot of resistance from the pharmaceuticals because they want to keep making more and more of the same medications. You know, we have, we have uh, over 40 antipsychotic medications, but they all work the same. They are blockers of the dopamine 2 receptors in the postsynaptic uh, uh, terminal. And they, they are not different from each other. You know, we divide them in first generation, second generation, because they have various adverse effects that are different from the first to the second generation, but they are no different. They ultimately they do the same thing. They block the dopamine receptors, and same with in major depressive disorder. All these medications, all these antidepressants that were developed, a multitude of them, they all work on the same the same way that they block block serotonin reuptake. So so make more serotonin in the synapse. Exactly, and you can't keep on doing the same thing and expect different results. Exactly. Obviously, the dopamine model and the serotonin model, the hypothesis there has worked perhaps somewhat, but not very well. And it's time for a different approach. That different approach can be found within the pages of this wonderful book. It's called Serotonation, A Driver of the Status Quo. It is an eye-opening work that challenges the way we view and treat mental health today. This is an important work it is well worth your time to read it, understand it, and see what's going on with society, big pharma, and the U.S. government when it comes to mental health treatment in the United States and across the globe. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time, your insight, and your wonderful expertise. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight. Thank you.